If your request is wrong, God will say no. Hmm. If your timing's wrong, God will say slow. Hmm. If you are wrong, God will say grow. But if your request is right, your timing is right, you are right, God will say go. What that means more than anything else is that when people say, I don't know why God doesn't answer my prayer, what their assumption is that the only answer is yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says slow. Sometimes God says grow. All of those are answers, not ones that we might like to hear, but answers nonetheless. Why are prayers sometimes not answered? Well, let me give you a statistic that will get us started. Here it is. 100% of the prayers that are not prayed do not get answered. Okay. And that's really the biggest problem, isn't it? The Bible says we have not because yeah. we ask not. Mm. A lot of people that worry about why their prayers don't get answered, when pressed to the limit, confess that they hardly ever pray. So there's hardly anything for God to answer. <laughs> but then when you get into the scripture, you discover a couple of things that are really important. First of all, the Bible says that if we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. That means if we have unconfessed sin, not just, not just perhaps one that we're not aware of, but long, uh, if, we, if we just go on doing things we know are, are displeasing to the Lord and expect him to hear our prayers for the things we, we desire, that probably isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the Bible tells us that we have conflicts with each other. That won't happen. There's a couple of verses in the, in the, in the Gospels that I, I, I love. Uh, it goes like this. If you come to the altar, uh, you, you're coming to pray, and you have aught against somebody else, leave your prayer, leave your gift at the altar, and go get right with the person you have aught against. Then in another Gospel, it says it almost the opposite. If you come to the altar and you know that someone else has ought against you, leave your prayer at the altar and go get it right. In other words, if you have conflicts with people, it's always your turn to initiate getting it right. And if you go on in your life with conflicts with each other and try to pray and wonder, why isn't God hearing me? Maybe you need to go to the person that you have conflict with and get that right. That seems to be the pattern of the New Testament. Also, the scripture says, and this is a shock to most people, that uh, if husbands don't take care of their wives in the right way, their prayers won't be answered. That's actually in the scripture. So here's what I've learned about prayer and, and prayer being answered. Just a couple of things. I know you guys are laughing, so, I, so I'm not going to go wow. down that road. I but, just, um, I, you, just, <laughs> yeah. you just threw all husbands under the bus is, is kind of what just happened. So okay, well. Yeah. I'll be happy to come back and talk about that more. <laughs> but here's a, here, <laughs> here's, a, here's, a little, here's a little thing to remember that somebody taught me a long time ago. It goes like this. If your request is wrong, God will say no. Hmm. If your timing's wrong, God will say slow. Hmm. If you are wrong, God will say grow. But if your request is right, your timing is right, you are right, God will say go. Mm. What that means more than anything else is that when people say, I don't know why God doesn't answer my prayer, what their assumption is that the only answer is yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says slow. Sometimes God says grow. All of those are answers, not ones that we might like to hear, but answers nonetheless. I believe that when we pray, God hears us and he answers us. But I also believe that these things impact our prayer life greatly. Mm. Okay, that was a little bit too much wisdom because that, <laughs> that means all, and all prayers are kind of answers, just not the answer you're looking for. Is that kind of, kind of what you're saying? That's exactly right. Yeah, it, when people say, I don't know why God doesn't answer my prayer, what they really mean when they say that is, I don't know why God doesn't give me what I want. Mm. Yeah. But answered prayer isn't God giving you what you want. Prayer is a relationship with your creator. And when you talk to him, like if you were to go to your parents and, and you're, you're 12 years old and you say, I want a convertible, you know, he's not going to give, your parents are not going to give you that. Mm. You're not going to get it. But are they answering you when they say no? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get out of this idea that answered prayer is God always giving us everything we want. Prayer is a relationship. It's not a... 
He's not the, um, the, the, the guy in the sky who gives you everything you need, everything you want. Yeah. Um, think back for a minute, I'll give you a second. Give us a, give us a story in Dr. David Jeremiah's life where you've had to go and have some uncomfortable encounter with somebody and have some kind of a situation because you were declaring a moment ago that prayers aren't answered because of it. It's a pretty important thing. Give us an example of something that you've had to deal with. I was on a, a radio station here in California and I'd been on for several years. And one day I got a letter in the mail saying that I'd been taken off this station because they wanted to put somebody else on from a different perspective. And, um, I was really bummed out about this. I thought it was wrong. I thought I had done a good job of helping that station and doing all that I could. Then um, I, I listened uh, one day after I had gone off and I realized that somebody else was on there who didn't even fit the, the, the description of what they said they were gonna do. I was so bothered by that and it really troubled me because I was having a hard time praying. And, um, and then God helped me understand that I needed to get that right I got the bill for the time that I had been on and it was for only half of a month. And God just said, David, pay the whole month and tell him to use the rest of the month to help the new guy get a good start. Wow. Once I did that, God released me. He released me from, you know, I felt like I had been misused and, and it really didn't matter anymore. I had to take and I had to go to that guy in the certain way that I could and get it right, and then I was free. It's so interesting to me that when these things come up in our lives, if we just ask, the Lord will show us what they are, and he'll tell us what to do. And if we do it, then we have that relationship restored. So you feel like you had uh, a communication, a personal communication from the Lord. Uh, go to that moment and describe that for our viewers, That that... There's some traditional denominations that, that don't believe that that kind of stuff still goes on, mm. uh, but it feels like you got something very specific. It was very important for your life. How did that happen? How did you feel that communication from God? Well, you know, man, it starts out by realizing something is wrong. You know, we know, we intuitively know when, when if we walk with the Lord, and all of a sudden we know something's wrong. It, it, that's an intu intu intuition that, that we feel. Then I began to wonder why. And, and I, I remember reading in the scripture, and, and maybe it was the verse that I, I mentioned earlier, where the Lord says, uh, you know, if, if I regard iniquity in my life, the Lord will not hear me. I felt like my prayers weren't getting answered. They were hitting the ceiling. And, but I had this issue that I was... I was um, I was nursing it. You know, there's an old adage when these things happen, uh, don't rehearse it, don't nurse it, reverse it. <laughs> and so I had to reverse that by going and getting it right with the person that I was feeling this, this angst toward. It's just a reminder to me that um, we, we, can, we can get back to where we want to go if we're willing to do what God tells us to do. Yeah. And I just sensed in my heart, I didn't hear any voice from heaven, but I heard a voice in my heart. I heard an inward voice saying, you know, if you do this, I'll take this angst away. And I did it. And, he, and, it, and I've learned that lesson that you, you can do that and you can resolve your conflicts. And then God, it, you feel your relationship with God is, is back where it should be. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.